Welcome back to the Go Engineer YouTube channel. My name is Enrique Garcia, and I'm a senior simulation specialist here at Go Engineer. In this video, we will introduce solar access studies using SOLIDWORKS Motion. We will learn requirements for setting up the study type and review some tips that can help maximize your usage of the tool. Before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. With SOLIDWORKS Professional or Premium, you can apply sunlight to your SOLIDWORKS models. With sunlight applied, we can then use solar access studies to follow the behavior of the sun across your models. This is useful for many applications, such as maximizing sun penetration for solar panels or to examine solar exposure on outdoor equipment. It can also be used for architectural applications, such as designing with sunlight or to complement factory layout planning to maximize equipment placement for passive heating or cooling. In our example, we will track the movement of the sun in an interior space from sunrise to sunset. Here we have a model layout of a furnished apartment. If I zoom into the living area, you will notice that we have a television sitting on a shelf or organizer next to the couch. Now let's say that I'm not sure of the placement of the television within this room. I'd like to place it in a location where I won't be exposing it to direct sunlight, since that would degrade the image quality. I would like to ideally watch the television at any time of day as well. So we want to pick a location in the room where the sunlight will never directly touch the television. I will use SOLIDWORKS Solar Access Studies to determine the most ideal placement. To facilitate moving the television around, I have made a separate configuration of the apartment with the television sitting on the piano. First, before we begin playing with sunlight, we need to ensure that a few settings are turned on in the SOLIDWORKS environment. I'll navigate to the Heads Up toolbar in the Graphics area of SOLIDWORKS and ensure that Real View Graphics is turned on, as well as Shadows and Shaded Mode. You should also turn on the Perspective option, as it allows for a more accurate calculation of reflections, lighting, and shadows, if you decide to render the Solar Axis study using PhotoView 360. Also, under the Display Style pull-down, ensure that we are using one of the shaded display styles, such as shaded with edges. You will notice now that we have some shadows that appear in the graphics area. We will begin to manipulate these shadows by adding the sunlight feature to the SOLIDWORKS lighting environment. This is located in the Display Manager tab above the Design tree and under the View, Scene, Lights, and Cameras icon. We will expand the Lights section. And notice that we currently have the general ambient light and a directional light that is currently active. We will add the sunlight feature by right-clicking on the Lights folder and selecting Add Sunlight. In the Sunlight Property Manager, I will first select a reference to denote the north direction to have accurate sunlight orientation. Any north-oriented edge will work. This will show a temporary direction compass that will appear on the floor of the scene to confirm the proper orientation. Next, under the Location section, I will pick a desired location of the model. I can either pick from a preset list of major cities across the world from the flyout menu or enter specific coordinates for a more specific location. I will then specify a specific date and time for the placement of the sun in relation to my model. Once I have completed specifying this information, I will click OK to accept the sunlight details. Next, I will turn off any previous directional lights in SOLIDWORKS and PhotoView 360. And I will edit the ambient light feature. In the Ambient Light Property Manager, I'll decrease the intensity value to somewhere around 0.16, as even in the dark, there's still some ambient light that exists in real life. Since I have another configuration that I'm going to compare shadows with, I'm going to make sure that I also set the ambient light to the same setting on the other configuration. And I'll turn off any directional lights on that configuration as well. This next tip is optional, but for absolute control and repeatability of your viewing angles, you can create a SOLIDWORKS camera feature and save a very specific orientation and view of the area of interest. In the Scene, Lights, and Camera section in SOLIDWORKS, I'll right-click on the Camera folder and then select 
add camera. The graphics area will split into two sections, the right side showing the view of the virtual camera and the left side showing the orientation and placement of this camera in our virtual space. For selection under the target point, we can click on our model to place an area of focus for the camera, which for us can be around the television screen. And we can then adjust the camera's placement and orientation by manipulating the arrows on the left side of the screen. Under the field of view section, we can edit the lens of the camera. I'd like something with a much wider field of view. I'll select the 24 mm wide angle lens. So I'll go ahead and cancel the creation of this camera feature and use an already created camera view. This camera view will allow me to observe the shadows in the room when the television is closer to the couch. I'm almost ready to create a solar access study and track the sun across my room. The last thing I need to do is unhide my ceiling on both configurations of my apartment model. Let's create our solar axis study next. This is driven by using SOLIDWORKS Motion. On the lower left hand side of the SOLIDWORKS interface, we may have an already created motion study we can use. I will create an additional one by right clicking on the motion study one tab and selecting create new motion study. For the type of study, we can leave the animation study type selected and I'm going to click on the animation wizard icon in the motion study toolbar. On the first section of the wizard, we could select delete all existing paths if you're reusing an existing motion study. To the right, I'll select the Solar Access Study Radio button and click Next. On this next section, we can choose how we want to track the sun in our study. We can choose to track the sun on a particular day as the Earth rotates about its axis, or track the sun throughout the year as the Earth travels around the sun. I'll go for the first option for our current investigation, but it's good to know that for future exploration, I can choose the other option to track the sun and its shadows throughout the whole year. I'll click Next and specify a time range from 4 in the morning to sunset for that day. I'll click Next and leave the default duration time and start time for my study and click Finish. SOLIDWORKS will now import the environment lighting settings and sun tracking data to the motion study and calculate the results. We can now click play to observe the effect of the sun traveling throughout the room of the apartment and how shadows track in the room. If I scrub the animation to about 6.30 in the morning, we can see that the sun hits the television directly and takes up about half of the screen, concluding that this position will not work. If I were to keep scrubbing, I can determine that the sun hits the television from about 6 a.m. to about 6.45 in the morning. If I navigate to the PhotoView 360 main menu in SOLIDWORKS and turn on the integrated preview option, we can see more defined shadows across a room, as well as more accurate lighting and reflections. This again is due to having the perspective option on in the view settings. You can also choose to render any frame of the animation with Foot of View 360 under the File Render line item. Here's a sample. To continue our investigation, I'll switch the position of the television to touching the north wall of the apartment. This will put the television on the top of the piano for our next test. And I'll click the Recalculate button in the Motion Study to make sure we update all the lighting settings for the environment with the new placement of the television. After I finish recalculating the motion study, if I click play, we can see that the sunlight seems to miss the television. To activate another camera angle, we can disable the playback of view keys in the motion study and activate this second camera view to examine the television more closely.
if I scrub to about 5 p.m., we can see that the sunlight hits the side of the television and the piano, but doesn't seem to hit the screen directly. I can confirm this by doing a quick rendering with PhotoView 360 at this precise timestamp. Lastly, I can save out the animation of my solar access study by clicking on the Save Animation icon in the Motion Manager toolbar. To render the video animation using PhotoView 360 and get the more accurate shadows, we can select PhotoView 360 from the Render menu pull-down. After reviewing the rendering and the rendered video, we can confirm that the sunlight never directly hits the television screen in this new position, making it the better position for viewing at any time of the day. This has been Enrique Garcia with Go Engineer. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please subscribe and leave us a comment below if you have any topics you'd like us to cover in a future video. Visit our website at goengineer.com for access to professional training, upcoming events, and more from your number one online technical resource. Thanks for stopping by. See you on the next one.